ओके सोन सर प्लीज स्टार्ट ओके ओके आई एम गोइंग टू इज माय स्क्रीन इज विजिबल ओके आई थिंक इट्स विजिबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू ओके टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू फर्स्ट डिस्कस व्हाट इज द रिलेशन मॉडल कांसेप्ट एंड डिफरेंट टर्म्स रिगार्डिंग योर रिलेशनल मॉडल कांसेप्ट ओके फर्स्ट वन इज योर डोमेन एट्रिब्यूट रिलेशनल इंस्टेंस रिलेशनल स्कीम रिलेशनल की और दीज आर द सम एंड नेम एंड सम कीज वी हैव टू डिस्कस अबाउट First, let's look at the table. There is a student relation table, or we can say simply a student table containing which are it is containing name, roll number, phone number, address, and age. And you can see that every row contains a record of a student. Like the first row contains the record of Ram having roll number four one four seven nine five, phone number something, and no address, no data, and age is twenty four. Likewise, there one two three four four five number of four rows. Okay, then we can say that this is the domain. Domain in which domain? This is the student domain. Now, what are the attributes? That we hear that in this table, name, role, role number, phone number, address, and age are the our attributes. Okay, then we are going to define what are the keys, what are the relation schemes, what are the relation issues. Okay, then properties of relation. In this table, we are, I have already told the name, role number, phone number, address, and age are the attributes. The instance schema student has five number of tuples. Tuples means what are the number of attributes? Like, for example, forty-three row for row for row number three. That's the name is Lakshman. What are the tuples? The, this row number three is defined by tuple Lakshman. Then row number, then phone number, then address, and then age. This is the called this is tuple type tuple type of representation for T three. Okay. Then what are the properties of relation? Name of the relation is distinct. From all other relations, so that means here the relation name is student. Whenever we are going to save or any create any data table in the database, we must create any very unique name. Give a unique name. There must be not there must not be any type of collision. Each relation shall contain exactly one atomic value. One one atomic value. Okay, then what, what, I am going to show what is atomic value or not. Each attribute contains a distinct name. The attribute domain has no significance. Tuple has no duplicate value. Order of tuple can have a different sequence. That means this order of the tuples can have a different sequence. We are going to discuss what are the attributes, what are the atomic value in the ne next slides. Okay. Then I am going for the next slide. What are the relational algebra? There are relational operation can be dependent into different types. Selection of select operation, project operation, union operation, set interaction, intersection, set difference, Cartesian product, Riemann operation. Why I am going to discuss one by one. What is a select operation? For example, in a table like this, this is this is a loan relation table. The man means this is a table name. The, the name of the table is loan. We can say that this is a relation having a name loan. Having a name loan. Okay. Then what what selection operation? What this this operation do? For example, I want to select some some of the attributes from, for example, name or rule loan, loan number or amount. Then I have to specify in a specify in a command format. So this is right written that the select operation select tuple that satisfy a given predicate. Predicate what is the predicate? We are going to discuss. It is denoted by a symbol sigma. Here the notation is sigma pr. What is the pr? Pr is the professional logic of proof. We, we can see see that is a predicate. And R stands for your relation. Okay, we are going with the example. For example, I want to select the branch name. Mm, branch name of uh, something in the, 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 the English name. For example, this is a RAM. This branch name is in branch name is so something C A C department or M C A department something like that. Okay. Then I can I will select write that select sigma symbol branch name is equal to write and loan. That means loan is the loan is our relation name. Loan is our relation name or our table name is loan. Where I is the branch name, and I have to select select branch name. Where select branch name is equal to period loan. What will this? What will be the output of this? Then the output will be will be this total row. Total row will be displayed where name equal to period or um, period. That means the total row means the in the in the first table we can see that there are two rows. First row is period L fifteen. Fifteen hundred and another row is period L sixteen thirteen hundred. These two rows satisfy our condition. What is the condition? Where branch name is equal to period. This is our condition. Then why I am selecting the both rows? 
that's why the output will be these two rows whether that l15 1500 whether that l16 1300 in this way we can select a select a row or select any mm, select a record of a record of a mm, Then project operation. What do you mean a project operation? This operation shows the list of the attributes, list of those attributes we wish to appear in the result. Rest of the attributes are eliminated from the table. For example, in this, in the previous example, when we are selecting all the three, all the three attributes like branch name, loan number, and amount, all the three records are displayed. But I want to select only two records, or only one record. For example, I want to select only loan number, or I want to select only amount. Then what I am going to do? I can do by this pi symbol, this project operation. It is generated by pi. Then how I'm going to write it? Pi a1, a2, an. Then I'm going to explain it. For example, this is a table. What is the name of the table? Customer relation. In the customer relation table, I just only want to see the see only what name and street. I don't want to mm, view the city uh, city information. Then what I am going to write? I will write pi a name comma city. It is the attribute name name comma city and the relation in name is customer customer this is the relation name then what will it display only the name column and the city column will be displayed and what are the name and city i have selected name and city name and city will be displayed the street information will not be or street column will not be displayed then using the pi symbol or using the projection project project, project operation i can select which attributes i want to view in my visual sheet that's why I am using project operation, and this is the oper operator used, used is pi. Okay, then I am going for the union operation. What is my union operation? Suppose there are two tuples, R and L. The union operation contains all the tuples that are either in R or either in S. Means when we are giving any union operation, both all the tuples continuing from the IR and continuing from the Rs will be displayed. For example, take the example of this these two tables. There is a depositor relation and there is a borrower relation. Depositor relation is what are the attributes? One is customer name and another is account number. And similarly, in borrower relation, another one is customer name, another is loan number. There are two types of relation. We can say there are two tables having customer name, account number, and customer name and loan number. And when I am going to join or when I am going for the union operation, what will happen? What will be the result? Result will be, result will be, first I have to command. What is the command here? I have, I have written that command, pi customer name. Pi, what do you mean by customer name? Pi is selected. Pi is used to select which attribute I want to show. I already in the previous example, I have shown that. Here, pi customer name. That means pi customer name, table name is borrow. That means I want to see the customer names, only the customer name from the borrow table. Union, and after this, it is union with which pi customer name from a depositor. That means customer name from the depositor table and customer name from the borrow table will be union. That means you, all the records from the from the this table, customer table, and the customer name. Only the customer name from the first table, the customer name, and the, from the second table, all the customer name will be merged. And if there is any duplicate value, they will be deleted. That means they will contain only single value, not like that. For example, here in the first table, Smith is also present. In the second table, also Smith name is present. Then there will not not for going for the duplicate value. Only one single time Smith value will be appeared. So the output will be Johnson Smith has in this way. Then we can say that this is the union operation. Then how do how do I, I am again explaining this? First, I have to write pi customer name borrow. What does this represent? Pi means I have to view which attribute I have to, or which column I have to view only the customer name column from the borrow table. Likewise, I am unioning with the, with with customer name from the depositor table. That means it, this command will go for all the customer name from the borrow table. With it will be unioned with all the customer name from the depositor table. Duplicate value will be deleted. This is the simple union operation then we are going for the set interaction sorry set intersection 
said intersection means simple why inter intersection means we can say the common name we can say the common name from this table we can see that only the smith in the both tables smith is present here the smith is present and the, in the another name is something jones here jones is present and second here jones is present that means only two names present in both the tables that are is that are smith and jones then when we are going for the set interaction operation only smith and jones will be displayed what are the what the command i have to write by a customer name borrow intersection by a customer name depositor then first command it will select all the customer name from the borrow table then this command will all the customer name from the depositor table then both the record will be intersection that means on the only the common name will be displayed and the common names are smith and jones this is the what intersection operation then i am going for the set difference operation what do you mean by set difference operation suppose there are two tuples r and s the intersection will contain all the tuples from r but not in s that means it will display all the tuples of r that are not in s that means is i can simple r difference r intersection as i can show that means for example in in the previous in the same example for example this is the our example in the first table what are the names present Johnson, Smith, Myers, Turner, Johnson, Jones, Lindsay, and in the second table, Jones, Smith, Myers, Jackson, Corey, Smith, Williams. Then I have to find when this is the R table. First one is R table. Second one is S. Take, take this step. Then R minus S will select the customer name from the first table, which are not present in the second table. Like for example, Johnson. Johnson is present in the first table, but it is not present in the second table. Then R minus will S will contain Johnson. Then I'm going for Smith. No, Smith also present in first table and second table. It will not be included. Then I am going for Myers. Myers is present in the first table, but it is not present in the second table. Then it will be included in the result. Then Turner in the present in the first table, it is not in the second table. Then it will be included. But um, then Jones. Jones in is in the first one, but it is also in the second table, so it will be excluded. Likewise, Lindsay, Lindsay, it is present in the first table, but it is not present in the second table. So R minus will uh, also called R minus S will contain Jackson, Hayes, William, but on the only the sorry, uh, only only those names which are present in the first set, but not in the second set. Then why I am going for the Cartesian product? What do you mean for Cartesian product? Cartesian product is used to combine each row in one table with each row in the other table. It is known as the cross product. It is denoted as X. For example, ED. Suppose this is a two table. There are two tables. First one, first table is name employee. A second table name is department. Then when I am going for the Cartesian product, all the records of the all the row of the first table will be will be merged with the second table. Then I can say that three into three. I'm going for this. Okay, first one. For take the example of first one. There the first one first row contains one employee name Smith, employee department A, and employee department department in the second table department number A department name is marketing. Okay, I am then what will be the result? Then one Smith A department number marketing means one Smith A and it is marketing, it is already merged. Then I am going for the Smith with one a Smith A B cells means each row of the first table will be merged with the all will be union with the displayed with the second table row then next row will be one smith a a b cells then third next row will be one smith a c ligand likewise this is the first three row then i'm going for the next heading then heading will be two heady c then the first row of the second first row of the second table then two heady c then of the second row of the second column then the second, then with the third row. Then total, I can say three into three, there will be total nine number of rows. I can say there are total nine number of each row of the first table will be displayed with the 
second each row of the second table this is our packaging product it in, in under result is displaying the output table okay so then what is it our last one is your rename operation the rename operation is used to rename the output of a relation it is denoted a row symbol that it is the row symbol for example i want to change row student one student so we can use the rename operation to rename student relation to student one then first one is your new name and the second one is your existing name. then i am changing student to student one this is the operation of row operation this is simple rename operation. okay then i am going for next join operation it is very much important in dbms what is the join operation a join operation combines related topics from different relations if and only if a, if a given condi join condition is satisfied that means a condition will be given and according to that condition all the tuples will be all the tuples from the two or more tuples will be joined or will be concatenated and how, how it is denoted it is denoted by this symbol you can see that this symbol. okay then i am going for example there are two tables simple i am going for the first join operation first in the first employee table there are two two attributes first one is employee code second one is the employee name it contains three records 101 102 103 then like similarly there is for salary there is salary in the salary table there are two attributes employee code and salary and it contains only it also contains three records then if i am going for simple join operation then employee join salary employee join salary what will be the result all the result from from the i can see that what, what is the result in the result table you can see that all the records from which are matching from the for example 101 present in both first table in the second table so it is matched or it will contain 101 stipend and salary 102 j and 3000 103 harry and 2500 and 25000 if these are already concatenated or we can say these are the first simple normal join operation actually i am going to show what are the types of join operation in detail there are different types of join operation we can divide into three types first one is natural join second one is outer join and third one is equation and, and uh, again outer join is in, again divided into three types left outer join right outer join and full outer join and first one is natural outer join. i am going for the natural outer join okay a natural outer join we have already discussed first one is your natural natural out natural join is the set of tuples the set of tuples all combines are and yes that are equal on their common attribute names it is denoted by this symbol example let's see the above employee table and salary table okay and what i am going to give the command here i am selecting i pi First region is pi. Pi why pi is used for pi is used for select. Select the tuples. I want to select only the employee name. That's why it is written pi employee name and comma salary. That means I want to view only the employee name and salary where all the, both the tables are joined. Which tables? Employee table and salary tables are joined. Then what is the how it will be concatenated? An employee table. This is the employee table. This is the salary table. Employee code, employee code. When, whenever there is a match between these two, this, uh, this tuple uh, record, 101, 101 matches, 102, 102 matches, 103, 103 matches. In that case, when there is a match in the tuple, in the first tuple or employee code, then there will be there will be join. And what will, after joining, the, all the three records will be joined like this. And what what tuples I want to see? Only I want to see only employee name and salary so that's why the employee name and salary will be displayed like this employee name and salary only two columns will be displayed then i am going for the it is just all about your natural join then why i am going for the outer join the outer join operation is an extension of the join operation it is due to missing information okay for example these are two tables first one is employee table second table is factory workers okay and this column first employee table contains employee name street city as sample second contains employee name branch and salary okay then i am going for the simple employee mm, employee join fact um fact on the fact purpose then what will be the output what will be the output 
output will be okay the output join is basically sorry out, output will be ram sam and hari how uh, how i got the result of ram sam and hari you can see that from those tables ram is present in both the tables ram and ram is present in both the tables sam present in both the tables ravi present in first table but it is absent in second table hari present in the first table but it is absent uh, sorry hari present in the first table and it is also present in second table but the kuber present in the second table it is not present in the first table you can see that so only the common outer gen will take the only the common part then ram sham and hari ravi will be excluded from the first table and kuber will be excluded from the second table so the it will contain ram sham and hari and all the records will be all the records will be joined then that means it will list in contain street city Branch select because I have not mentioned any type of select command here, so all the record will be displayed. Okay, and outer join is basically of three types. What are the those? Left outer join, right outer join, full outer join. Okay, then I am going for the left outer join. We can see that there is a different symbol for the left outer join. Okay, then how it is in the left outer join contain the set of tuples all components in R and S that are equal on their common attributes. Same in the left outer join. Tuples in R have no matching tuple in S. Okay, Tick. then I am discussing with the example. Okay, then from the example you can say left outer join. Then left outer join means in in the, in the left outer join you can see that that Ram, Sam, Robbie, Hari. But in the second second table only Ram, Sam, Robbie do not present. Hari is present, but Kuber is not present. Now, what will be the left outer join? The left outer join contains all set of all tuples comb combination of R that are equal on their common attribute names. In the left outer join, tuples tuples in R have no matching tuples in H. Then, there what will be this? Then, it will be Ram, Sam, Hari, Robin. Okay. Ram, Sam, Hari, Robin. Then, this is you can see the Ram, Sam, Robin, Hari. But this is the it is it is actually this rev left outer join contains all the records where the, for the from R, but it is excluding from the second table because it is left outer join. We can go for the right outer join. We can say that it will contain Ram, Sam, Kuber, Hori. Okay, we can we can see that in the right outer join it will contain Ram, Sam, Hori, Kuber because it it, it is containing. Or it in the right outer join, tuples in S have no matching tuples in R. It means it contains all the records from R, but not from the R. It is with that doesn't have the matches. Okay, this is the right outer join. <laughs> then full outer join. What will the full outer join? Full and full outer join. We are we are using a different type of symbol. We can see that it is the we can say it is the combination of left outer join and right outer join. Then it will be it will contain all the five records. It will contain all the five records means from all the records from R table and all the records from S table. Okay, it is this way: Ram, Sam, Hari, Ravi, and Kuber. Okay, this is the full after join. Okay, then equation. What do you mean by equation? Equation it is also known as inner join. Also, it is also known as inner join. It is the most common. It is based on the match data for equality condition. The equation from is equivalent equal to simple okay for example there are two two, two relation customer relation product relation in the customer relation class id name present product id city present one two three john harris jackson in the second one two three delhi mumbai no data present okay then after the equal join it will check the equal when the equal will be displayed this is the wrong symbol Equal. For example, here matches one matches two matches things. All the three record matches, so it will go for the equation, and it will contain all the records because all the three records match from the first table and second table. So one matches with one, two matches with two, three matches with three. Uh, all the records with matches, so it will display all the all the symbols because here we have not mentioned any type of pi symbol. If we have mentioned pi symbol, it will only display only display. Those tuples which are described or which will be mentioned in the file symbol. These are our different type of joints. 
left natural joint, left outer joint, right outer joint, full outer joint, and our equal joint. Okay. Then we are going for the different type of integrity constant. There are different type of constant present in our database management system. Okay. They are divided into four types. First one is your domain constant. Second one is your entity integrity constant. The third one is your referral integrity constant. Fourth one is your key constant. First one is your domain constant. What do you mean domain constant? Domain constant can be defined as the name of a valid set of values for an attribute. For example, uh, the data type of a domain include strings, character, anything in time. Date. Okay. For example, in this in this table, I have I have saved the record of ID, name, semester, age. So you can see that in the last row, someone has entered it is as an age. But we know that age may must be an integer number. It cannot be a A, B, C, D. It must be an integer number. So this type of integer, no, this type of value or this type of value will not be entertained or it will not be entered into the database. So this is called domain constant. For example, we are taking a mobile number. Then what do we know value mobile number? Mobile number will contain 10 number of digits. It will contain, it will not contain any type of alphabet, alphanumeric character, and it must contain 10, not less than 10, or not 9, not 11. If you are going for a mobile number. So this will be a valid mobile number. This is a domain constant. We can put this type of constant. Okay. Second one is your entity integrity constant. What do you mean entity integrity constant? The entity integrity constant states that the primary key value cannot be known. For example, in this table, employee table, employee, suppose the employee ID of our primary key. Then we can see that in the last row for Jackson, to where which salary whose salary is 27,000, the employee ID is missing. But if we cannot insert this type of record into the database because the last record has doesn't have a employee ID and as the employee ID is the primary key we cannot give a null value to a primary key we have already discussed in the last class primary key cannot have a null value it must assume we must give a value to a primary key if it is a declared as a primary key but if, if in the case of unique you can give a null value but not in the case of primary key so a table contain no a null value other than the primary key okay then we are going for the referential integrity constant. What do you mean referential integrity constant? It is something important. We have already discussed about the foreign key. What is a foreign key? If a tuple present in the first table is a primary key in the second table, or if you can say that a attribute present in the first table, which is a primary key in the second table, which is called as the foreign key. For example, in the table one, the department number is present. But in the second table, the department number, D number is the primary key. So we can say that in the table one, department number is a foreign key. So what is the referential integrity constant? A referential integrity constant is specified between two tables. Okay. Then what is the referential integrity constant? Very bad. If a foreign key in a table refers to the primary key of a table two, then every value of the foreign key in the table one must be null. Or be available in table two. That means either all the values will be known. It is already done. Then every value, every value of the foreign key in table one, either it will be must be null or available in the table two. Either it will be null or it will be available. For example, we can see that the, what are the dependent numbers present here? 11, 24, 18, 13. But in the in the second table, only 11. 24, 13, 13 is present, 18 is absent. So it, will, it cannot happen because it is the primary, it is the primary in the second table. It must have a null value. Either it will null or it must have a value. So it is a differential constant. Not allowed as the number 18 is not defined as a primary key. Defined as is not defined and as a primary key of table two in table two. D number is a foreign key defined. Okay. Then I am going for the key constant. What do you mean key constant? Key constant are the entity set that is used to identify an entity with its entity set uniquely. For example, that means if what is the role of a primary key? I can say that primary key uniquely defines a uni, uniquely defines a record or a row. Okay. For example, here if the ID is a primary key or key, 
then we can say that we can see that there is a two number of rows which contains same value for the primary key. First one is 1002 Leonardo and 1002 Morgan. Then two numbers of records have the same primary key. It is the violation. So it cannot, primary key cannot have a duplicate value. We have already discussed primary key cannot have a duplicate value. Primary key cannot have a null value. Okay, these are the five key constant. We have already discussed. Okay. <coughs> then, but then next one is your our relational calculus. What do you mean relational calculus? Relational calculus is a non-procedural query language. In the non-procedural query language, the user is concerned with the details how to obtain the end result. Actually, how to define, how to write a result or how to write a query in relational calculus. Relational calculus is divided into two types. One is topo relational calculus, another one is domain relational calculus. Actually, it is a little bit difficult, but we have to understand it. What is a topo relational calculus? Topo relational calculus means it is it is more, more similar to your mathematics. Okay, topo relation. Topo relational calculus is specified to select the topos in a relation. In TRC, filtering variables use the topos of a relation. The relation, the result of a relation can have one or more number of topos. For example, we can write this TRC as T. This symbol is read as such that P of T, or we can say that T such that condition of T. Then I am going to describe. It. Okay. For example, there is a table. Okay. T is the resulting table. Okay. And P T here T is the resulting table, and P T is the predicate, or it is the condition used to fetch the T. For example, we have a we have a database where the where we, we want to fetch the uh, in the table. There is a table which contains name, author, and article. Okay. Then I am going to what is the name? Who has authored a table? Authored a book. Okay. Then I, how I am going to face this? Only the I am I have to face only the name who have authored the database book. Then how I am going to do so? Here, like the written that T dot name. It will select. It will select. What you what is going to select? T dot name from the T table, it will select the name so that author of T that means T is a author and T dot article is a database that means T in the table, then the role is present and the table is present. That means I have to select the name of that person which is a author and he has authored the database book, database, database, um, database book. Then this will reply or this will give the result only only of those names who have authored the database book. It's, and I am going to explain another time and next time. T dot name that means table from the table T the name will be selected. Which name will be selected? Source that where author T then the author T means the name will be present as the author column author column that means. Mm, T is an author and T dot article. What are the article he has written? Article is database. Then those name will be displayed. Then this will this query select the topos from the author relation. Author you have the name um, um, name of the table, or we can say the relation is author. It returns a topo with name from authors who have written an article on database. Okay. TRC topo relation can, can be quantified. In quantified, we can say that. In either in this way you can write or either there is another real rule. For example, this is the for example, this is the quantified relation. The, in the quantified relation, there are two types of symbols. There is exist and one is universal quantified. Universal quantified is written with this symbol and there is there is exist. This symbol is that there exist and this is the universal quantified. Okay. And how I am going to read this one? R such that relation are such that there exist t there exist means some name exists so which belongs to there exist there exist t belongs to author t belongs to author such that t dot article is equal to database t has written the article database and r dot name is equal to t name here r is the our our r is the output result r is the output result t is the table we can say r is the output such that it belongs to T, such that T belongs to authors. T 
any t belongs to author so that any we can say t is take as a variable which belongs to the author table and t dot article is equal to database that means he has written the article database and the most both name will be match r name and t name must match then is it written r dot name is equal to t dot name in this way we also can write and the both the first example and the second example will give the same result it is going for the name which is the author it will, it will display the name which is your author and the author book database okay this is our trc topo relational calculus second one major domain relational calculus the second form of relation is known as domain relational calculus in domain relational calculus filtering variable uses the domain of attributes okay it uses logical connectivity like and this called written this is ready at and or this is the not symbol it uses existential quantifier and universal quantifier to bind the variables for example what is the notation a1 comma a2 comma an such that p is a predicate p or any p stands for the formula where a1 are the items okay If for example i want to select i want to select what i want to select the article page number and subject name where the subject is database okay then how, how i am going to do so i am here i have defined the tuple what i am going to view this is the written in the angular bracket i have written article page subject these are the items i want to view so that it belongs to the java point and the subject is database that means where it will satisfy where the where the condition it belongs to the java point and the subject is equal to the, the subject will be database and it will be it belongs to the java t point then this this query will and will the article page and subject from the relational java from the relational java point where the subject name is database then what will be displayed this three will be displayed on which condition on this condition either a it must belongs to the java point and the second condition the subject must be the database when this condition will be satisfied it will belong to the java point and the subject is database then that on that record article page and subject will be displayed this is our result and this is the two types of calculus one is relational calculus topical relational calculus and another is domain relational calculus okay then we are going for a second second important topic that is our that is our functional dependency or we can we are going for a normalization thing okay what is functional dependency it is in mathematics it is in relation function if you have you have studied in plus two this relation function okay so functional dependency is a relationship that exists between two attributes it typically exists between the primary key and the non primary key or non key attribute within a table for example x determines y that means we can say that the left side of the fd is known as determinant and the right side of the production is known as the dependent like for example assume we have an employee table we have an employee table lab employee and with attributes employee id name and address then here the employee id attribute can be uniquely here you can say in general you can say that in the employee table employee id is the primary key and it can uniquely identify employee name and employee address okay we are there so we can say that we employee id employee id is your determinant and employee name and employee employee address are the dependent or the functional dependent and so we can write the in the in the formula we can write the employee id determines employee name that means one can one can fetch one can know the employee name from after he knowing the employee id or you can say that employee name name can be can be derived from the employee id okay we can say that employee name is functionally dependent on employee id in this case we can write that employee name is functionally dependent on employee id similarly we can say that employee address is also functionally dependent on employee id okay then what are the types of functional dependency there are two types of functional dependence one is our trivial functional dependency 
one another is non trivial functional dependency okay what do you mean trivial functional dependency for example if a determines p has a trivial functional dependency if b is a subset of a that means the dependent is the is a subset of a in that case we can say that it is a trivial functional dependency for example take the example for the consider the table with two columns consider a table with two columns employee id and employee name it is only employee id and employee name then we can say that employee id and employee name here it is a it is a, it is a superset the employee id is a trivial function dependency employee id is a trivial function dependency edge because because you can see that this this the this, this left side the in the function the left side is our determinant and the right side is our is our is our dependent and employee id is a subset of the bigger set because in the bigger set or in the super set both employee id and employee name present then we can say that this set this set is a super set of employee id or we can reversely say that employee id is a subset of employee id and employee name the whole set is the self subset of the whole set so we can say that employee id is a subset of this set also employee id determines employee id employee id determines employee id and employee name and, uh, and employee name that means employee id determines employee id and employee id determines employee name in this case we can see that employee name are trivial trivial dependency too that means the, because this is our big set this is our left side this is our right side in this function the, the right the side, side is the subset of the left 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 side so and the left side determines the right side so we can say that yeah. this is a trivial functional Possible dependency okay. then what do you mean non trivial functional dependency if right side is not the subset of left side then in that case we can say it is a non trivial functional dependency for example a determines p has a non trivial functional dependency if b is not a subset of a when a intersection b is not for example let the let the take the example a and b and in the both set there is no common item present then a b a determines b is called a complete non trivial for example id is a set and name is a set i name is a set and dot net of party is a set and there is no common element in the first set there is no id and name and then there is no common thing between id and name or name and gov in that case we can say it is a non trivial functional dependency okay then one next thing is our inference rule what do you mean inference rule there are different types of inference rule present and we have only discussed we have only studied in mathematics also okay so i'm starting with the first one is your reflexive rule what do you mean reflexive rule in the reflexive rule if y is a subset of x then x determines y that means right side is a subset of left side then we can end then x determines y for example if x is the superset of y then or we can say that y is a proper subset of proper subset of x then we can say that x determines y for example take the example x subset x set contains a b c d e and y contains a b c from this we can see that y is a subset of x so we can see that x we can say that x determines y that means y can be derived from x okay. this is our reflexive rule then the next one is your augmentation rule what do you mean by augmentation rule the augmentation only is also called a partial dependency that means if x determines y then in the both side we can attach z that means x z determines y z that means if x determines y in the left hand side i am going to add z and in the right hand side i am going to z add the z then they what will the result x z determines y z for example this that is relation a b c d and if a determines d i can add another c then a c also determines b c because in the left and both the right side the c is added this is called augmentation rule next one is our transitive rule transitive rule what do you mean transitive rule if x determines y and y determines that then we can say that x determines z this is our transitive rule transitive rule is 
x determines y, then y is derived from x, and z is derived from y. Then we indirectly we can say that x z is indirectly derived from x, and this is this type of relation is called x determines z, or it is called transitive rule. Okay. Then next one is our union rule. Union rule says that if x determines y and x determines z, x determines y and x determines z, then I can add both y and z. That means if x determines y and x determines z, then I can easily write that x determines y. Then. Both y and z are union. There is a union between y and z. So I can write that x determines y z. Okay. And here is the proof. I can use the previous rules to derive this way. Okay. You can go through this. Due to time constraint, I am not going for the proof part. Okay. Next one is the decomposition rule. What do you mean by decomposition rule? See, it is just reverse of the union rule. If x determines y, z, then I can write that x determines y and x determines z. This is our decomposition rule. Thank you. Okay, then next one is a pseudo transitive rule. So what do you mean pseudo transitive rule? It means if x determines y, that means y is derived from x and yz determines y, not y is determining j w, yz determines w. That means y is combined with z and it determines w. Then we can write that if y is, y is derived from x, and after combination with y and z, w is derived. So we can write that in place of y, we can write that x because y is derived from x. So we can write that finally we can write that xz determines w because in the first truth, in the first truth, edge yz determines w, and I am replacing the y with the value of x because y is also derived from x. Then what will become xz determines w. This type of relation is called pseudo transitive rule. Okay. Then next next thing is our normalization. Now, what do you mean by normalization? Normalization is the process of organizing the data in a database. Normalization is used to minimize the redundancy and you know, anomaly. So what do you mean redundancy? What do you mean anomaly? I am going to discuss. Normalization divided the large table into small table. What is the role of the normalization? Actually, for example, in the database table, I have designed a table. There will be two number, more number of records from same primary key. Then what will happen? For example, 101, my name is present, and I it is assigned a subject with physics. Then uh, again, there is a subject for chemistry. Then there will be an insertion anomaly or insertion redundancy because more number of times, two number of times, my name will be inserted for two, two different subjects. For, there will be two number of entries of my name. This type of redundancy is called in, insertion redundancy. There are different types of redundancy. I am going to explain all this bit by bit. Okay. Then types of normal forms. What is the types of normal Actual types of normal forms are designed to deal with this kind of anomaly and redundancy. Okay, there are five numbers of, mm, there are more numbers of, actually in the figure it is only shown four, but except four, there are only more, another two type of no, no, normal form. First one normal form, two normal form, three normal form, BCNF stands for Boycott normal form, fourth normal form, and fifth normal form. Okay, there are, mm, there are total in total six normal form present. Okay, I am going to discuss one by one. What is first normal form? What is first normal form? In a table, for example, it is actually atomic value. A relation will be in one and a it contains an atomic value. What do my atomic It states that an attribute of a table cannot hold multiple values. It must hold only a single value attribute. You can see that in the table, EMP phone, there are two number of records from the same row. Same row, there are two number of records. Likewise, in the third row, in the that two number of records, we cannot insert multi value or more than one value in the same table. Then we have to we have to divide the table or we have to go for a division. Then one or go for a different table row. Then we can see that there is 14. The, the, this record is divided into two number of rows. First one record, and you can see that in the second table, each 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 field contains only one. 
value no no pill contain more than one value this is one normal fact that means atomicity atomicity is just says that in every pill there must be maximum one value not more than multi value that you cannot go for a multi value that is good okay then so go on going for the second normal form what do you mean second normal form highest condition of second normal form is it must be in the first normal form if i am going for the second normal form i have to solve for the first normal form after solving from the first normal form in the second normal form all the non clean attributes are fully functionally dependent on the primary key okay fully functionally dependent what do you mean by that for example in this table you can see that let us assume a school store data parents and mm, the data teacher and the subject they teach okay okay in the teacher table what are the uh, what are the attributes are present teacher id subject and teacher age and in the teacher id mm, we you can see that mm, we, we can see that there is 25 25 47 83 83 subject chemistry biology english math computer and teacher id are present okay in this given table non prime attributes are which are it is a non prime attribute are teacher age teacher age and teacher age is dependent on the teacher id which is a proper subset of a candidate key that means teacher age is a fully functionally dependent on the teacher id or it is a proper subset we can say it is a proper subset of a candidate key in that case it violates the violates the rule of second normal form to convert we have to break this table into two different tables how do i am going to two different tables for example i will go for teacher id and subject to one one table and i have another table will contain teacher id and teacher age then in the result table will be 25 30 47 35 83 and 30 then in, there is no duplicacy likewise teacher id subject there is 25 for 25 47 83, 83 and the subjects are present in this way that means there is the in simple in simple meaning we have to check for check for the proper subset if we teacher age is dependent on teacher id which is a proper subset we have to check it, whether it is a proper subset or not if it is a proper subset then it violates the violates our second end of this is all about our second end then we can we can see we can remember easily by first end tells about our atomicity atomic value second and second and second and f tells about the proper subset of fully functionally dependency third one is your transitivity rule we can say that transitivity partial dependency okay what do you mean transitivity partial dependency okay what do you mean three and f so three and f must be in two and f before we are going to um before going to three and f it must be two and f then what is the relation it must not be transitive parcel dependency and it must not contain any type of transitive parcel dependency okay but in this table you can see that there are five num there are five number of attributes employee id name zip code mp state and mp city okay then we can see that um here you have the super key super key in the tables above we have, um, first we have to we have to uh, derive what are the super key okay what are the super key any type of combination of primary key or single primary key we can write that okay then employee id can be then what the employee id with employee name and then employee id employee name and employee chief and so on we can go for that for example candidate key employee id what are the non prime non prime attributes in the given table all the no, all the attributes except employee id are non prime we can see that in the table employee id is prime and all those are non prime attributes okay here a employee state and employee city employee state and employee city dependent on employee, or employee dependent on employee chief and and employee chief is dependent on employee id okay you can see that for example we can in this table employee id determines employee chief and employee chief determines employee state that means there is a transitive rule that means what is my transitive rule s determines y and y determines z in that case we can see that say that there is a transitive rule in this in this table okay. employee id determines employee chief and consequently 
employee jeep determines employee state and employee jeep still determines employee city. So there is a presence of transitivity rule. Or we can go for it, go for a table division, or we can go more more than one table. And how the table is divided? First table contains employee ID, employee name, jeep, and second table contains. Oh, sorry, sir. Uh, dear learners, please unmute your mic. Swagatika, madam, please unmute your mic. Mute, mute. Mute, mute, mute. Okay, okay, sir. Mute, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Then we can see that as in the first table. Employee ID determining employee chief and employee chief determine employee state and employee city. There is a transitivity. So, um, to break this, um, break the transitivity rule or transitivity dependency, we are going for two tables. First table contains employee ID, employee name, employee chief, and second table contains employee chief, employee state, and employee city. And we can see that there is no transitivity rule in any of the tables. So we can we can conclude that. Is it it is in both the table sign have normal form. Then I am going for the fourth number. Then I am going for the boycott normal form. I have already told that what is boycott normal form. Boycott normal form is an advanced version of third normal form. It is strict than three and okay. Then a table is BCN if every functional dependency x determines y and x is the super key, x, x is the super key of the table. For BCNM, the table should be in 3NF. Before going to BCNM, we must check whether it is in 3NF or not. More is more satisfied in 3NF. And for every functional dependency, LHS is a super key. LHS is a super key. Super key means which is either the primary key or with the composite of primary key and non key attribute can be combined to make a primary key. Or to be a, which can uniquely identify a row. Okay. In the above table, in the employee table, there are present employee ID, country, depend, department name, department type, and department number are present. In the above table, functional dependency are as follows. What are the functional dependency are for? Are? Here we can write employee ID determines employee country. That means there is a functional dependency of employee ID to employee country. And next one is employee department to department type, department number. There is a there is a functional dependency, but that means department type and department number can be can be derived from the employee department. Okay. Then what will be the candidate key? What is here the candidate key are and what will be the candidate? Then it is the employee ID and employee department. Both will come on. If I want to if I want to uniquely identify any row, then I have to go for employee ID, both employee ID. And employee department. If I am going to select a single single attribute, I cannot uniquely identify. The table is not in BCNF because neither employee department nor employee ID are keys. Because I have already told, nor employee department can uniquely identify the whole row, or not employee ID can uniquely identify the whole row. In that case, we have to convert to in the given table into BCNF. We decompose it into three tables. What are the tables here? Because what are the tables? What are the tables? First one contains employee ID and employee country. First one will simply contain employee ID and employee country. Actually, you know, how to how we are going to divide the table? It is up to the user. But it must satisfy the rule. It is one one person can divide more number of tables. Go for three or four number of tables. But it must satisfy the rule. One, I am saying because one can divide one table into two number of or more number of tables in its own way. What is more satisfactory rule? So, division of two tables, division of tables of two users may not be same, but it more satisfies the rule. This is the basic criteria. Okay. The first thing we have to, I have to divide first one is employee ID and employee content. Then we can verify that. I have to verify the all the either it is in one NF, two NF, three NF, B NF present or not. Yes, the employee ID can uniquely identify this this thing or the employee country, so it is in B Then I am going for the department table. 
आज माने जो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सेकंड माने जो एमपी डिपार्टमेंट है बोलते हैं इंडियन डिपार्टमेंट है ओनली डिपार्टमेंट डिपार्टमेंट टाइप एंड डिपार्टमेंट नंबर आर प्रेजेंट बोथ आर सेपरेट टर्म आज आई हैव सेपरेटेड एम्प्लॉई एंड एम्प्लॉई कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एट नेक्स्ट आई हैव सेपरेटेड एम्प्लॉई डिपार्टमेंट डिपार्टमेंट टाइप डिपार्टमेंट बट देयर इज आई हैव टू एस्टैब्लिश अ रिलेशन बिटवीन एम्प्लॉई आईडी एंड एम्प्लॉई डिपार्टमेंट देन आई एम गोइंग फॉर द थर्ड टेबल देयर इज अ मैपिंग टेबल एम्प्लॉई आईडी टू एम्प्लॉई डिपार्टमेंट दिस वे आई कैन डिवाइड द टेबल्स I am. I am again saying that the division of tables may not be same. May not may be different from one person to another person. I am going to divide the table. But it must satisfy the rules. Okay. In the simple thing, I am going for the employee ID, employee ID in one table. In the second table, a department, department type, and department number ID. Then I am mapping from employee ID to department name in the third table. In this way, I can go for the go for the BCN or mark. For the first table, what are the two things I am making? For the first table, employee ID. Second table, employee department. For the third table, both employee ID and employee department. So your candidate team. Okay, this is our this is our. Then I am going for the fourth normal form. What do you mean by fourth normal form? The lesson will be in fourth normal form, or if if it is in previous year, it must have to be BCNF. And it must contain multi. It has no multi-value dependency. What do you mean multi-value dependency? In this table, you can see that for the most student ID has course computer. The student ID twenty one has in math both two number of courses and two number of hobbies. They are same and same. This type of record is called multi-value dependency because for a dependency A determines B. If a single value, single value of A, multiple number of B exists. That means we can say that if for 21 there are multiple number of value exists, then the relation will be multi-value dependency. Now, what do I have to remove the multi-value dependency? So I have to remove the multi-value dependency in this way. I have to I have divided into two tables. Because I, in 21 there is computer and there is dancing. In 21 there is math and singing. So there will be a multiple yeah, dependency. So okay, okay. I have divided it in first column. I have taken the course and the second table. I have I have taken the student ID with hobby. So there will be no overlapping. That means there will there will be not the multiple dependency. Now in the student relation, a student ID 21 contains two courses, computer and math. And two of which then still singing. So there is a multi-value dependency of student ID, which leads to unnecessary repetition of data. So to make the evaluation further, we can deposit it to the post. Okay, this is in our this is in our student in our fourth normal form. Then last one is our fifth normal form, and it is shortcut which is called as lossless decomposition. But do you know lossless decomposition? It is simple. And what is the lossless? One? In the lossless decomposition, a big table can be divided into more number of tables or any number of tables, but irrespective of the that, what is the condition? When I am going to again going to join the table, all criteria or the relation between them must be must be satisfied or must be maintained. That means I have to divide the table. Without losing any type of property, this is called lossless decomposition. That means relation is I by N, it is uniform, and not contains any joint dependency. Joining should be lossless. That means joining should be lossless. Lossless means whenever I am going to join the table, there must not be any type of loss of data or loss of any type of relation. I by N is satisfied when all the tables are broken. Into as many as tables as possible in order to avoid the redundancy. I will not be also known as project join normal form PGM and F. Okay. For example, this is the subject lecture semester. How I am going to decompose? For example, I have taken first table semester one subject. Same. Then I am going for the subject and the lecture. Name. Then I am going for the subject. Sorry, semester and the lecture. In this way, I can divide. Any number of tables can be divided, but there must not be loss, loss of any type of relation. Lossless. This is what, that's why it is called lossless decomposition. And about to, we have to about the redundancy. What do my redundancy? I have already told because if there is a semester one, semester one, semester two, it is some data. If it is some data, we can we can it can lead to a redundancy. So this is called five and.
okay you can you can divide by any number of tables there is no restriction on the table for the more satisfied of constituents this is our five n okay um, it is all about our, um, all about our normalization term. then before concluding this whenever it is generally asked question in different types of enterprise then if you are going to design a database or if you are going for any type of software design how much level you can go for the normalization for example i am developing a library management system in that type of system if i am going for a different i have to save the data library all the database and i am going for different number of tables but i can achieve maximum up to 3 nm not i am going i cannot achieve 4 nm and 5 nm in practically achieving 4 nm and 5 nm is, is difficult i am not saying that it is impossible in general project or general uh, our project or um, management system we go only go for the 3 nm and bcm not for 4 nm and 5 nm it is the simple normalization question asked in different type of interview okay but it is possible but it is it, it is hard to achieve for an event five minutes because it is like complex because division table is easy but how one is going to divide the table in different number of a number of tables it is dependent on the user and it varies from one user to another user or one person to another person okay it is all about our normalization then mm, okay Okay, it was, um, as it's reflects it's not in course, relational decomposition. Then we are going for the transaction. So what do you mean by transaction? What do you mean by transaction? The transaction is a set of logical related operations which contains a group of tasks. Then we can say that if I am going for the insertion command, command, objection command, deletion command, different types of command, if I am grouping them, you can say that a transaction. A transaction is an action of a series of actions. It is performed by a single user to perform operation for accessing the contents of the database. Okay. For example, open account, old balance is equal to X balance, new balance is equal to old balance minus 100. That means I have deducted some amount from the old balance and then X balance is equal to new balance and the close account. That means I am opening the account, I am checking the old balance, I am deducting from the 800 from the old balance, then I am saving the new balance to the X dot balance, then X dot balance, that is my account number change, so for that, then I am closing the account. So for this is, these are the transactions. The operation of transaction that there may be two types of operation. One is read operation, another is write operation. Read operation is used to read the value from the X from the database, and X is the write operation used to write the write value back to the database from the buffer. Okay. Then I am, for example, read X. I it is going to read the value of X. Then it is going for the operation X will X minus five hundred. Then the so five hundred will be deducted from the X value. Then it is going for the RX, oh, sorry, WX. Then it will update the value. WX, it means it will, it will the update the value. These are the different kind of transactions. After commit, then there are two commands I have already said. One is commit command, another is roll, roll the command. It used to save the work done permanently. If I have done all the transactions, I am going for the commit command. After committing the command, all the value that are reflected uh, on the database will be permanently saved. Roll back if any of those. Actually, I, if, uh, if we are talking about transaction, more number of actions are involved in any type, any type of transaction. Okay. If in between from in, from n number of transactions, suppose one or two number of transactions are failed, or two or one or two number of um, two operations are failed, then what will happen? The total transaction will be rolled back from the previous state, from the present state, present in present um, unstable state to any previous stable state. But how, why I am going to present the unstable state? Because, for example, there are five number of person, three numbers of person has committed or um, completed, but two numbers are on two number of person are uncompleted. Then I can say that there is an unstable condition. So we have to roll back all the operation to the previous state. Well, and all the changes, all the changes will be on the, the there is a, there is a uh, property of rollback. 
and next thing is your different type of property properties are atomicity consistency isolation durability i already in this one what is atomicity consistency isolation durability in the first class because atomicity it, it states that all operation of the transaction takes place at once if not transaction is aborted hoga to hoga nahi to pura cut kar diya matlab kuch bhi nahi hoga that's the atomicity it states all that all operation will be satisfied or all the transaction will be aborted okay for abort i am going for the abort command for all the comment that will i am go using the commit command okay okay due to time constraint i am unable to um, complete all the all the part i am going to you know discuss all the all the rest part in the next class i am going i also ex explain different type of sql commands uh, to do different type of operations select command operate command these are the operation different kind of commands i will discuss in the next class because If, if anyone has any doubt because i have we have left with only 15 minutes okay if, you, if anyone has any doubt he can ask me i i can solve the then or i can go for any type of doubt regarding questions okay hello hello सर कोन कहउछंती कि यस यस माने मु माने दी तीन टा टॉपिक सरि जाय छी तो सेति मे पछि जदि डाउट छ पछारि कि आकु जिबा कर सेदा मु पकौ छी नै सर हमें पिला को आउ 10 मिनिट जबा पछ को जदि पिला पछारि बे प्लीज सर गो हे बे अपन ओके ठीक है ओके ओके व्हाट यू एटोमिसिटी आई हैव दिस लेट्स अज्यूम दैट The following transaction T consists of two transactions. One, for example, T1 and T2. It consists of A consists of RS 600 and B consists consists of 200. Transfer of RS from one account to B account. That means I have to. If I am sending from one amount from A account to B account, then T1 to T2. Then, for example, what will what I have to do? First, I have to read from A because A contains 600. Then I have to deduct an amount from the A account. Then I will write back the amount, write back the new 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 value to the A. Then in similar way, I will read the read from B. I am going to add the amount. Then I am going to write the operation to B. Or after completion of the transaction, A consists A must consist five hundred and B consists four hundred. That means after the deduction of amount from hundred, no, after the transfer of amount from hundred from account A to account B. A will contain six hundred minus one hundred five hundred, and B will contain three hundred plus one hundred four hundred. If the transaction T fails after the completion of T one, okay. If the transaction T two fails after the T one, but before the completion of transaction T, that means transaction one is completed, but transaction two is uncompleted, or transaction two is not successful. Then what will happen? Then the amount will be deducted from A. But not added in the B. That means, for example, in the in this that T1 and T2, and for example, first you have to deduct from T1. Then I am going for the addition in add into T2. If T1 is completed, that means one amount is deducted from T1. But T2 is not completed. That means amount is not added to account account B. In that case, there will be an inconsistency. So in order to ensure the correctness of the database. The transaction must be executed entirely. That means either T1 and T2 both will be executed, or the if T2 fails, both will be rolled back. This is called atomicity. Then next one is your consistency. Now what do we mean consistency? <coughs> the integrity constants are maintained so that the database consistency before and after the transaction. The execution of a transaction will leave a database either in priority stable state. Or a new stable set. That means I have already discussed either after the completion of the transaction, we must reach any stable state, or it must roll back to any previously stable state. That means the consistency property of database states that every transaction see a consistent database interface. The transaction is used to transform the database from one consistent state to another consistent state. That means if after completion of the transaction There is no consistency in the database. Then there will be 
then we can say that the new state is an unstable state. Then we have to roll back from the present state to the previous state. This is called consistency. For example, the total amount must be maintained before or after the transaction. For example, total, total before T occur 600 plus 300 is equal to 900. And total after T occur 500 plus 400 is equal to 900. Then we can say that, from example, both of the total amount of T1 account A and B will be before the transaction. What will the amount? 600 plus 300 is 900. After the transaction, A contains 500 and B has 400. That total is 400 total is sorry 900 then we can say that before the transition the total amount was 900 and after the time the total amount was 900 this is called consistency that means before the transition and after the after complete transition it must con con it must come to a stable state okay next one is your isolation what do you mean isolation it shows that the data we use data which is used at the time of execution of a transaction cannot be used by the second transaction until the first transaction is complete. Suppose, uh, suppose the account is used by another, by a user, then at the same time, the, the database must not allow another user B to access the same account. If that case happens, there will be overlapping of transaction in isolation. If the transaction T1 is being executed on and using the data item X, then the data item cannot be accessed by any other transaction T2 T until the transaction T1 completes. That means T2 only can access the data item X only after the completion of the transaction T1. Until T1 completes, T2 cannot access the data item X. So that's this that's why it is called isolation. Next one is our durability. So what do you mean by durability? The durability property used to indicate the performance of the database consistent, consistent state. It states that the transaction made the permanent changes. That means durability means after the transaction, after the reflection of the value, after the completion of the result, the completion of the transaction, the value that are reflected in the database that must store permanently, that must be permanent. They cannot be lost by erroneous operation of a fault transaction or by system failure. Either maybe there may be a system failure or either physical damage, hardware damage, electrical damage, or do not mean the data present the database must be permanent. Or that or, or we can say that after the transition, after a successful transition, the mm, mm, the reflection made in the database must be durable and permanent. This is called durability. The state of a transaction. What do you mean state of transaction? In a database, the transaction, transaction can be one of the following. What is first one is active, partially completed. After partially completed, it is going either to a failed state or either going for the committed. After committed, it is end. Otherwise, active, active either after it is failed and it aborted and it is end. Then why? What is going for active state? Okay. What is active state? So active state is the first state of any of the, any of every transaction. If this state, the transaction is being executed. For example, insertion or deletion or updating record is done here, but all the records are still not set to the database. That means active means the data is fixed, the data is inserted, but it is not totally reflected in the database or the records are more stored in the database. We can say that this state is called active state. What is partially committed? In the partially committed state, the transaction executes its final operation. That means, but the data is not saved to the database. That means, operations are completed, but data are not saved to the database. Operation, plus, addition, minus, subtraction, objection, deletion are completed, but it is not the data are not saved to the database. We can say that there is a partially completed. Okay. Then, in the total mark calculation example, a final display of the total mark step is executed in the in the state. Okay. Then, what is a committed? A transaction is said to be a committed state if it executes all its operations successfully. In this state, all the effects are now permanently saved in the database. That means all the operations are completed and the data are saved to the database and they are permanently saved. That means we cannot change. After committing, then we cannot change the value. Okay. Now, what is a fail state? If any of the checks made by the database recovery system fails, then the transaction is set in the fail state. That means any transaction failures or any operation failures, that will be in a fail state. In the example of a 
total market because if database is not able to fire a query to face the mark, then the transaction will fail to execute. If it is going to face the mark, if it is going to calculate the total mark, it has to face the in the mark of individual subject. If any time of fetching if the operation fails, then it will go for a fail state. Then what do you mean about that? If any of the checks fail and the transaction has reached a fail state, if fail state, then the database recovery system will make sure that the database is in its pure consistency. So I've already I've told if any during any type of transaction, if any transaction fails, then it will it must roll back, roll back to a previous consistent state. The previous consistent state we have to go for the effort that this means if the transaction fails in the middle of a transaction, then before executing the transaction, all the executed transactions are rolled back to a consistent state. Means from the five transactions, the five operation, three are completed, but in the fourth number of transactions, it is failed. Four transactions fail, or four operations fail. In that sense, all the three operations will be rolled back and end, it will roll back to a previously consistent state. After reporting the transaction, the database recovery model will select one of the two operations restart the transaction or kill the transaction. I thought it will go for the restart the transaction and it will totally kill the transaction. It is in your about the Okay, what then what do you see doing? A series of operations from one transaction to another transaction is known as It is used to pick up the order of the operation in each of the individual transactions. Okay, what do you mean schedule? Schedule are three types. Serial schedule, non-serial schedule, and serial serializable schedule. Okay. One do what do you mean serial schedule? Okay, serial schedule we can see. The serial schedule is a type of schedule where one transaction is executed completely before the starting of another transaction. So we can say that serial execution of any transaction. That means in this serial schedule, when the first transaction is complete, it's second, the next transaction will complete. When the first transaction will be complete, then it will start to go for the second transaction. For example, execute all the operation of the Suppose there are two transactions, T1 and T2, which have some operation. If it has no interleaving of operation, then there are following two possible outcomes. Then execute all the operation of T1, which was followed by all the operation of T2. Otherwise, execute all the operation of T1, which was followed by all the operation. It is actually it is wrong. Execute all the operation of T2, which is followed by all the operation of T1. In the given figure, schedule A shows that the serial schedule T1 followed by T2. Either it will be T1 followed by T2. Or it will be T2 followed, sorry, sorry, it is T2 followed by T1 or T1 followed by T2. That means either one, all the time the operation of T1 will be complete, then the operation of T2 will be start. Otherwise, in the reverse condition, all the operation of T2 will be completed, or completed then our operation of T1 will go first. Okay. <clears throat> this is our serial schedule. What do you mean, neon serial schedule? If interleaving operation is allowed, then there will be a non serial schedule. It contains many possible orders, any possible order. That means, for example, for example, in the figure C, okay, in the CG, you can see that some operation of T1 are completed, then some operation of T2 are completed, then some operation of T1 are completed, then T2 are completed. In this interleaving, because it is not like that all operation of T1 completed, then only T2 is starting. No. In, in between, in two operation of T1 are completed, then to go from going for T2, two operation of T2, then again, again two operation of T1, then again one operation of T2, then again two operation of T1. In this one, it, it can be any order. Three, 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 two, one. Any no any serial can be happen or any order can any in any order the transaction may happen or operation can be operated. So it is called non-serial serial. And then the last one is your serial eligible schedule. The serial eligibility of a schedule is used to find non-serial schedules that allow the transaction to execute concurrently without interfering with another. You know, it will actually the it identifies which schedules, which schedules are correct when execution of the transaction and interleaving of their operation. That means serial eligible schedule means. Actually, whenever we are going for the non serial schedule, we may face different type of problems. So, we have to go for time to one type of self serial, self serial schedule that is called serial legible schedule. That means it will go for a specific order 
that in in which where we can go for a non citizen sudo that's called the sudo a non citizen sudo will be citizen sudo if its results is equal to the results of the transaction executed serially okay if you are go suppose there are twenty number of transaction if they are interleaving their operations in that if two transaction are executed in serial manner what is the result if the result is x and the it is the result is same if the non serial if you are going for the non serial sudo then we can see that the non serial sudo is a serial eligible sudo that means all in the both the case the result will be same this is called serial eligible sudo serial sudo non serial sudo and serial eligible sudo okay <coughs> Okay, it will take time. For today class, it's up to due to time constraint. It's up to the time. So I am concluding it. We have already discussed normalization, reliability, relational data model, join operation, different types of relational algebra. Okay, and I am also only referring to the online site, Java T point and Tutorials point. Anyone and any doubt, you can ask me or you can go through on all the online websites. Actually, it's all about our class. Thank you, sir, for a wonderful session. If any question, then uh, uh, learners can ask directly to sir. Otherwise, we will wind up here. Any question, you can directly by unmuting your mic. I think, sir, there is no questions. So, one question from my side, okay. sir. What is the difference between hard normal form and BCNF, basically? Okay. I am going to the table. Okay, in this, okay, as I'm going to explain what is 3N. Okay, in, th in 3 and now we are going for the transitive relation. Transitive relation means X determines Y and Y determines that, then there is a transitive relationship. Then in this, in this table, we can see that employee ID determines employee chief and employee chief determines employee state. Then this is a 3N, this, this is a transitive relation. Then we have to break the table. This will be 3 But what is the BCN? BCN states that it, it, BCNF states that thus it is a super key. That means a simple thing is that here, here is the last line digit for BCNF the table should be in 3NF and for every FD functional dependency LHS is a super key. Left hand side must be a super key. Now what is a super key? Super key either is a single primary key or it is a composite of primary key and non attribute key. Not non key attribute. That means for example, in the, in both the tables, we can see that from we have we have divided into three tables. In the first table, the primary key is employee ID. In the second table, the primary key is employee department. In the third table, the candidate key of the super key is both employee ID and employee department. That the left hand side must be a super key. So this is why it is called BCNF. We have to check the left hand side must be, a, be must be in uh, left hand side must be a super super key. One we we have already discussed what is super key. Super key means primary key or not key attribute. But in 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 three and up, we have to just break the transitivity rule. X determines Y, Y determines Z. If we can break that rule, we, we are achieving three and up. But we have to before be same. We have to check for the super key also. Okay. Thank you, sir. So now I um, request Bharat sir. If any questions, otherwise we will wind up here. So I think uh, is there any questions? Okay. So now here we will wind up our session. We will meet in next session. Thank you, Sohan sir. Thank you, Bhavesh sir. Thank you, all the participants who are participated in the session. Thank you all. Thank you.